Hey there, and welcome back to 10 Visits. Today I'd like to talk to you a bit about nutrition, and that's an incredibly important topic. It is such an important topic that with each doula visit that I do and that I recommend that my students do with their clients, we are following up and checking with the mama as to how she's doing with regard to eating. A good diet is the most important step that a mom can take to keep herself healthy, functional, viable, help her body deal with the changes and the burden on the body of building a new human being from scratch. Pregnancy is a beautiful, joyous, healthy time, but it is a stressor on the body. The body has to uh, go an extra mile, and it needs extra fuel, and food is fuel. Not only is food fuel, food contains the components which are the actual physical building blocks of this new human being. You actually are constructing this baby. Uh, not only that, the mom has to replace every cell in her body. We all replace every cell in our body. I believe it's approximately three months. So <clears throat> we need a fresh influx of nutrients and my, you know and um, nutrients and chemicals that allow us to do that process of staying alive, rebuild, building new tissue for all the systems of the body to work the way they are supposed to work, digestion, respiration, excretion, all of these things ha require uh, food as the way to make the, the whole engine run. Um, Pregnant ladies can be going to all of their uh, prenatal visits and being very compliant in that way, but no one is really scrutinizing exactly what it is they're eating. They're told to eat well, and they're given maybe very basic information, but uh, generally when things start to go south in some way with the pregnancy, no one really talks to them about their diet, even in very extreme cases of like... Uh, uh, preeclampsia. Um, no one really even looks at the at that there could be a correlation between her body just being de too depleted to go through the process of pregnancy. Um, the the things that are offered generally through uh, medical care is medicine. Um, gestational diabetes. Uh, a, di a diabetic mom, if she's diabetic before she's pregnant, has already definitely get some information about about <clears throat> uh, nutrition. But uh, when a woman becomes diabetic in her pregnancy, her diet is not often held accountable for that. So, what I have seen, what my experience has been, is that moms can avoid being. Uh, placing themselves in the process of being diagnosed as gestationally diabetic. And very often, mamas who have been diagnosed as gestationally diabetic can correct that condition by, not by having a balanced and sane um, uh, diet. The number one person to look up to find out about how this works is a gentleman by the name of Dr. Thomas Brewer. He has devised what's called the Brewer Diet. I 100% support this diet for pregnant women. I support this diet for non-pregnant women. I support this diet for human beings. It's a great diet. It is balanced and insane, and it's not has nothing to do with any kind of fads. Um, nothing that will come come and go, is solid, grounded nutrition for human lifespan. He has a construct of his diet for vegetarian people. He has a construct of his diet for carnivores. So whichever way you go, you're gonna, you will be covered. That's fabulous. And um, <clears throat> recommend him highly. I mean, do some, re Google him, find out about him. A an amazing, amazing practitioner uh, of of medicine who also has a sound grounding in nutrition. <clears throat> what I've also found though is that pregnant ladies have very 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 short attention spans. Uh, that process of being a, glor a glorious vessel of life often means that the 
uh, access to the left brain is limited. So I want to keep things very, very simple um, and easy for, for pregnant ladies um, who are trying to be pregnant and most moms now are working and so there's a lot of demands on them. Um, that's why one of the reasons why um, the diet kind of falls to the wayside. I mean, because it just there's just so much they have to think about in, in any given day. And um, even moms who are supported by a partner, it's just really difficult to make sure you get the, the food you get that you need in your body each day. You're running to work and meetings and all the things that, that pregnant ladies are en engaged in now. So, um, I was very lucky to be taught a system of eating by a midwifery teacher that I'd had several years ago and I want to talk to you about that now because I find it incredibly helpful. If a mom follows this diet she would be pretty much following what Dr. Brewer uh, suggests. Um, the only difference is that it's, it's easier. He has things broken down by the grams and how many grams of this and that. And some moms are very technical kind of people and they actually enjoy that and it's not a problem for them. But if that run-of-the-mill busy pregnant lady just wants a quick and easy way to do the right thing. She wants to do the right thing. She wants her baby to be healthy. She wants herself to be healthy. If you just break it down nice and easy for her, she'll do it. So, along those lines, I want to talk to you about the five-finger method of eating. The five-finger method of eating was devised by a midwife by the name of Valerie, Valerie El Halta. And um, I just think it's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful process. Basically, what the five fingers looks like is this. Three times a day, at every meal, in front of the pregnant lady, sitting there, at her table on her plate, she needs to see these five things. She needs to have water. Water is incredibly important for pregnant ladies. They need eight to ten glasses a day, which is more than the six to eight glasses a day that non-pregnant people need to be consuming. I just want to say nothing takes the place of water. So if a mom wants to enjoy some other kind of a drink, Hopefully nothing with caffeine or nothing that's de dehydrated. Or coffee is uh, causes one to lose water, so no coffee, you know, caffeinated beverages. But you know, if she wants to have a nice glass of a little cup of herbal tea or whatever. That's all well and good, but that's not taking the place of her water. So she needs to have six to eight glasses of water a day. Excuse me, eight to ten. She's pregnant. Um, so she needs to have water. She needs to have a protein source. She needs to be eating something that's made of a, that's a, a whole grain. <clears throat> she needs green leafy vegetables. And she needs a source of vitamin C. Not a supplement of vitamin C. Some thing in nature that grew <laughs> in the ground, <laughs> plucked from a tree, <clears throat> that contains vitamin C. So your homework is to sit down, doula, and to... Um, Look at all these categories and think of all the recommendations that you can make to your clients of all the things that are um, available that contain these things. And sit down and work with your clients. It's actually a very fun exercise. Sit down with them and plan out like a week worth of meals where what would it look like to eat like this. Very often here in the Bay Area, I hear all the time, oh, that's so much food. I'm just not used to eating that much food. That's the case. That that that. That just might be the case. So if mom, mom's going to need help in, A, knowing that it's okay for her to eat this amount of food, that it's necessary for eat, her to eat this amount of food. If she eats this way, she's covering all of her food groups, she's getting enough protein, she's really not going to have a whole bunch of cravings. I really found that to be the case. And moms are craving sugar and things like that. And it turns out that that's probably a sign that she's not getting enough protein. When the mom's getting enough protein, and I recommend moms to push to get at least 100 grams of protein in their bodies every day for themselves and for their babies. When they get that, they are satisfied. And the, the need to binge eat and the need to crave things, especially sugary things or salty things, really goes away. I hear this mama after mama after mama. So... You know, 
moms might have their thing that they're addicted to, and they look at you with their sweet little faces, and they're like, can I, can I please, you know, do I have to give up my wonderful sweet thing that I have been enjoying up to this point? And you can tell them, no, you don't have to give it up, you know, this, but eat this first, and then see if you still want it. Very often, mamas will not want it. So we want to uh, try to be very kind. There's a lot of energy and issues around food. A lot of people do have uh, eating disorders. I see that often, and I see it more and more often. So we want to be very, very gentle and non-shaming. When, when we ask a mom to show you what she's eaten for the past 24 hours, be very affirming of whatever she's written down, and make very gentle but firm suggestions for change and remind her how important this is, how she really is eating for two, and that the two, being she and her baby, are cherished by you, her doula, and, her, and certainly cherished by her family, and how we want them both to do well. Grow a big, beautiful, healthy baby, and be able to push it out in the way she envisioned. Her diet is the key to helping her make that dream come true. We'll be talking again soon. Thank you for being with me today. Have a great day. Bye.